Hello, everybody. This is Josh. Welcome to Uncensored Advice for Men. This show is for men by men to get us through this dark time that we're facing in the middle of March 2020, where we're becoming isolated. We're being forced to be around our, our family, our kids in the middle of the workday. We are changing constantly, rapidly, and uh, this show is to give advice to other dudes to help them get through this and stronger and to build a great community. All right, so on today's show, we're going to have one of my, my friends, Mark Santiago. He's going to come and, and talk to you guys a little bit. So, uh, Mark, why don't you uh, say hello to everybody? Hey, hey, how's it going? Yeah, man, yeah. So, uh, Mark, tell us, uh, tell us quickly about uh, who you are, what you're up to, and uh, kick us off with, like, a story or a joke or something. <sighs> I've always got jokes. Uh, I, I try not to tell too many corny jokes. My kids call it dad jokes now at this point in my life. You know, when you're in your 20s, you think it, you're funny, but then when you're 40, it's everything, it just goes to a shit show. Um, so uh, I, I work with men, entrepreneurs. Uh, myself, I'm an entrepreneur um, primarily. I've got two businesses. I've got a digital marketing agency as well as a men's coaching business uh, where we focus on men who live in or are trying to get out of abusive relationships uh, with their wives or ex-wives. Um, so, you know, this whole coronavirus thing has been interesting. And, um, I was at Dollar Tree the other day and we were buying some things, you know, you're trying to find something. And, uh, you know, I said, do you guys happen to have toilet paper? Because, uh, you know, if you're listening to this six months from now, you might remember six years from now, the great toilet paper Armageddon, right? There was no toilet paper anywhere. And, uh, I said, I said this out loud. There was a bunch of women in line. I said, you know what? This is a great time to go into the sock business. And they all kind of looked at me like, what? I said, that's right. Do you remember the old diaper businesses where people would buy cloth diapers and then a service would go around and clean those diapers? Well, if we all just had socks and we used those to wipe our asses with, I could make a shit ton of money literally by cleaning all of your shit off of your socks. So it's like kill two birds with one stone. Why? Because there's so many fucking socks out there. We would just be like amazingly prepared. So if shit really hit the fan, like literally and figuratively, then we all have socks. We can clean our own shit and we're good to go. So there you go. Hey, I love that idea, man. Uh, what did they say? Uh, crisis creates opportunity, right? Uh, there you and go. this shit really exactly. does the fans. Socks, socks are the way to go. You just solved the yeah. pandemic toilet paper epidemic. <laughs> I've been trying to tell people. Yeah, I'm glad this is going on a podcast. Hey, look, if you take that idea and you run with it, uh, just give me some credit. Just, just let me know or send me a check if you want. But, but either way, I, I think it's a great idea. You know, soft, plush. Fuck the charming. Let's use the let's use the uh, the regular good white socks. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah. Well, brown socks would be better that way. You know they don't stain. Yeah, but you you know the the, the black like you remember your dad's socks. You know like could you imagine trying to use those? Like you'd have to go through yeah. ten of them just to clean your ass like nicely. But at least the soft and white ones they're thick and absorbent and they would get all the shit off of your ass really good. Matter of fact, they probably do better than toilet paper. So I'm actually highly considering utilizing this technique. Yeah. Let us know how, come back later on. Let us know how it goes. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mark, you, you're a, a coach for dudes who are trying to get out of a toxic relationship or, or how to, uh, once you're out of it, how to, how to kind of thrive. So why don't you kind of give us a tactical advice because a lot of men are being faced where they're being thrown into a house where they're maybe, you know, working side by side now with, with someone who's in a toxic relationship. So kind of unpack that, give us some advice here, bud. Yeah, I have this thing I call, you know, that a lot of men do, and that's because they're, we're, we really, we come out of the womb and we suck at communicating. Like we just don't know how to talk. We don't know how to articulate our feelings. It feels weird. It feels feminine. It just, we just, it just doesn't work that way. Our brains are not wired like women's, right? Yeah. Women come out and they're just like having tea and mimosas and they're just all about talking to each other and having fun and, and all this. And guys, we just struggle. So I call it the great grunt. And that is that men grunt as opposed to articulating their feelings. And, you know, if you're constantly right now with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, and whether your relationship is toxic or not, this will apply to you. Um, and that is because we tend to, you know, get locked up in our brains and we don't actually communicate. So I have kind of these, these three main things that you've got to not do, like these are my don'ts. And then I'll talk about like the process I take, especially when I'm texting. But you know what? Like, like look, if you're next to your wife, you're not going to usually text her. But 
Maybe you have to at this point. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you, you know, smelled her shit too much, too many times. And you're like, you know what, babe, I'm just going to text you back because right now I'm not feeling it. So the first thing is stop using you in your, in your statement. So if you say, you always do this, you never do this. You're just doing this. You're just trying to do that. What happens is when you're in a state of conflict and you're using you statements instead of I statements, your wife is going to get uh, defensive, just like you would get defensive if she's saying those things to you. So, for example, if she's like, well, you always leave the toilet seat up or you always use your socks to wipe your ass. That's disgusting, right? Your automatic in, you know, uh, motive is to say, oh, my gosh. She's coming at me. She's throwing the shit at me, the bricks at me, the, the, the socks of shit on them at me. She's throwing everything at me. And, and we can't do that. We cannot respond with a you statement. So we have to respond with I statements. I feel like when this happens, it hurts my feelings. So if she says, you know, well, you're always doing this. Babe, I hear exactly what you're saying. And what I hear you saying is this. Da, 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 da. That way it slows everything down and it puts in perspective that you're actually hearing and understanding her. Um, profanity, that's another thing. Like nothing wrong with using, a, you know, profanity, cuss words, whatever, like, you know, teach his own if you want to cuss. But using profanity in how you respond to someone, like, you're a fucking bitch. You're a fucking asshole. You're a blah, blah, blah. You're now combining the you statement with a cuss word and, and what it's doing is causing even more angst. And so if there's a lot of profanity in your messaging going back and forth with your spouse, that's not healthy. That's toxic. And then the final piece of that is accusing, right? And, and accusing, again, puts up defensive walls. So if you're always accusing, saying, you know, gosh, like, let's say, for example, um, you know, like she, she leaves her clothes. My ex-wife used to leave the clothes on the bed all the time. That annoyed the fuck out of me. And like, I'd, I'd come home and there's like clothes on the bed. We'd go to sleep and there's clothes on her side of the bed because I've already shifted them all over to her side of the bed. And I'm getting annoyed as fuck, and it's like, you always leave your clothes on the bed. Why can't you fucking put them away? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, why are you doing this? And she's like, oh, no, 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 I just didn't want to, whatever, whatever, right? And so all that, that's you statement, it's accusing, and it's, and it's cussing all the same time. And that's like what causes all these things. It doesn't start there, right? It starts with you not articulating. So now we're going to go into the process of how to articulate that, right? So let's not, let's not wait till you're tired of, you know, seeing all of her coronavirus medicine all over the house and you're, and you're tired of her always leaving her dirty underwear on the floor, men, right? It, you know, you're, like, let's not wait till we get there. So this is sort of the process I would do. And that is this, is that in communication, we have to slow down, first of all. We have to get, and you can tell it in my voice, I've started to calm down. We have to slow down the emotions. We have to slow down everything that's saying. So let's say, uh, you know, whether you're in an argument with her, and, and, and she has started arguing with you, or she says something that triggers you. Trigger is that thing that she says that she always says, like, you're, when are you going to start losing weight? When are you going to start doing this? You told me you were going to do this last week, and you didn't do it. You're an asshole. You don't do what you ever say you're going to do. And all those things start happening, and, and immediately the man's blood wants to boil. And it's like, what the fuck? And you're just like, all the rage and stuff comes out of you. First thing we got to do is slow down. Because we have to realize at that moment, we are triggered. And for some guys, I'm like, hey, you might just need to pause the conversation right there and go for a walk. And you can simply say, honey, I hear what you're saying. And you sound very irritated. I'm starting to get irritated. I can feel it in me. And I don't want to say things I regret. So I'm going to go take a walk. And I'll come back in 30 minutes and we'll finish this conversation. By doing that, you're putting a time limit on it, for one. You're not just walking away and then, and then, and then deal, you know, like not dealing with it, right? You don't want to just put a pin in it and never come back to the pin. You want to actually deal with the issue. So first thing is slowing down. The second thing is actually hearing what it is they are saying. Brene Brown, uh, one of my favorite authors, and she's pretty famous, especially amongst women, she has this thing she, she talks about with, with her husband that she does, and I think it's a really powerful communication tool, and I use it all the time now. Um, and that is that when somebody's sharing something or saying something, I don't care who it is. Uh, I use this in client conversations all the time. They'll say all the, this list of things, and then I'll stop and I'll go, so what I hear you saying is this. And then I'll repeat back what they are actually saying. What this allows me to do is, number one, slow down. Number two, it allows me to not just have a response, but actually hear what they are saying. 
And once I've actually heard it and they go, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, we have communication, right? Until that happens, we don't have communication. Communication is a two-way street. It's not just you just throw shit at me and I just receive all this shit. It is a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth so that we can progress our relationship to the point of needs being met and people feeling served, hearts are good, where we're, we're in communion, we're in unity. And that is the goal of any relationship. Doesn't matter if it's husband, wife, doesn't matter if it's client, doesn't matter if it's your girlfriend, your kids, any of these, these, these strategies, tactics can work for anybody in any situation. Third thing is you want to identify what it is they're actually doing and saying. So for example, in a toxic situation, what I'm listening for is manipulation. I'm listening for anger, uh, meaning are they saying something? Because if I've gotten triggered, there's usually something there that has triggered me. And I want to identify, is this just their anger towards me and I feel insecure? Or are they trying to manipulate me with, with, their, with their, what they're saying? Um, my ex-wife would text me all kinds of nasty things. And the purpose of that, not that she was intending to, but the, the subliminal purpose was to manipulate me into responding. It's called baiting. And we all use baiting. And that is where you say something on purpose to get somebody's boil riling or uh, blood riling and going so that they'll respond in a negative way. And, you know, we've heard this said in relationships, you know, she knows how to push my buttons. This is very true. A woman always knows how to push your buttons, but you also know how to push her button when you start talking about her stuff. So all of that is emotional manipulation. And when we have emotional manipulation in a relationship, it is not healthy. It is not healthy at all. And nothing can actually be done. And so when I've identified, okay, so I've, I've slowed down. I've heard what they're saying. I've identified what's happening here. Are there triggers happening? Am I feeling manipulated? Am I feeling these things? Like, what am I feeling? Because that is the thing that men really, 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 really fucking struggle with. And that's because we don't want to go there. We don't want to deep dive into our hearts and go, I'm feeling like a little boy. Who wants to admit? I feel like a 10 year old when you talk to me like that, honey. Like, nobody wants to admit that. And so, I, and there's been times where I've had to admit that. I'm like, oh my gosh, right now, I feel like that 10-year-old boy that my dad used to scold. And you're talking to me in a way that feels not so good. That just feels creepy to talk like that. But it helps because it will melt them down. They're like, oh my gosh, honey, I, I would never want you to feel like a 10-year-old boy. That is not my intention. And it's vulnerability that is sexy to a woman. Listen, vulnerability is super sexy to a woman. We all think that we've got to be like these, these concrete barrier rocks. Now, in the heat of the moment, when, when if, let me, let me phrase it this way. In the heat of the moment, when there is a lot of manipulation, a lot of anger, a lot of things happening, and, and there's a lot of emotions coming at you from a woman, that woman in that moment may not feel uh, vulnerability for you or may not feel um, safe with you. And so therefore their, their vulnerability is coming out in a very dysfunctional way. And that is coming out through abusive language or coming out through accus accusatory things, all those things we talked about. And if you as a man receive that and go, I feel like a 10 year old boy right now, that will probably not go over so well. <laughs> so in that moment, especially for an abusive woman, uh, meaning a woman, especially with mental disorders or, or things of that nature, where they have no control over their feelings, they'd be like, oh, you stupid fucker. You know, and they're just going to like wail on you. And that's happened to me before. That's not fun. Um, and I don't mean like physically wailing. Well, well, that happens too. Uh, many men that I've talked to get, get physically abused um, as well as emotionally abused. But at that, at that moment, it's like I've got to identify internally what I'm feeling. And I can slow it down and say, honey, the way you're talking to me right now, I, I feel like you are scolding me like a child and that hurts when you talk to me that way and that tone and that language, it really hurts. And by doing that, it's not saying you're talking to me in a way that's abusive and mean. you're saying, I feel like the way you're talking to me right now is very hurtful. Apparently we're saying some things. Maybe we need to take a break for a minute and see what that does. That slows everything down, calms everything down and you're able to walk away at that moment. Do you need to interject? <laughs> I feel like I've been just going. No, I, I, feel, I feel like I need to practice this to you right now, all right? Because guys are not good at talking about their feelings. Like, I'm terrible at it, right? Yeah. I feel like if yeah. I'm going to do that, if I'm going to tell my wife and be vulnerable, 
I feel like it's giving them ammunition, but what it's actually doing according to you is it's disarming them and making you sexy. Vulnerability is the new sexy, right? But it's it's just going, okay, so I'm going to practice, Mark. Uh, you're going to be okay. my babe, okay, Mark? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, babe, the way, uh, the way you're talking to me is making me feel – uh, it's making me feel hurt, and it, it, and I'm. This is wow. This is tough, even to you, Mark. <laughs> the, yeah. I feel like I am being scolded, and that this is this conversation is being hurtful. Um, what I think you're trying to say is this, or maybe we should just take a break. I'm going to go for a quick walk, gather my thoughts. I'll come back in 30 minutes, and we could kind of walk through and talk through this. Did I do okay? Yeah, that's good. The was only I thing I think up there. You were, it was really sexy. I was about to jump through the okay. computer and jump your bones. Um, <laughs> what, the only thing I would take out of that is what I think you're saying, because that can still come off as defensive to them or offensive to them. What I would, I would slow it down and say what I hear you saying, because if I say, okay. I think you're saying this, that to them automatically assumes, you know, what I, what I'm thinking and feeling it's like, who the fuck are you to know what I'm thinking or feeling? You're not me. You don't know me. Just because you're my husband doesn't mean you know me. You're not inside of me. You don't have these tits. You're not me. So don't motherfucker try to act like you know me. And that's, that's the way they perceive that. Because uh, I used to say things like, she'd be like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I know you. I know exactly what you're thinking, feeling. Oh, do you, motherfucker? You're so cocky, you asshole. Right? That's how they perceive that. So we have to back that up and go, okay, so what I hear you saying is this. It's all about taking responsibility for me, not them and what they're saying. That's the difference. That's, that's the key to, I think, unlocking this communication aspect. The fourth aspect of this is really determining if a response is necessary. This is where so many men get into trouble because they keep opening their mouth up. I have this other joke now, right now. It's, um, you know, it looks like in the, in the presidential election, uh, you know, we've all kind of taken a break from, from politics because of the coronavirus. But it looks like Joe Biden's going to win the Democratic nominee. And then you got Trump on the other side. And I, and I called it way before Super Tuesday. I said, look, they're all going to get behind Biden. They're all jumping Bernie off at the, you know, at the gas station. They're like, Bernie was a fun ride, but now we're going to take all your votes. And I said, so we're going to have the flapper versus the gaffer. And, and Joe Biden's the gaffer, and Trump is the flapper. And you've got these two guys who can't communicate can you imagine what the debates are going to be like? Joe's going to be over there sniffing Trump's hand, you know, and, and Trump's going to be talking about how big his wiener is, and it's going to be amazing. Like, I can't fucking wait. It's going to be amazing. Awesome, awesome. So, hey, so let me just recap. What I'm, what I'm hearing is this, Mark. It's uh, There's toxic communication, which goes like this. Don't use – here are some don'ts. Don't use you in accusatory statements in conflict. Don't use profanity because it could set off triggers, and, and don't accuse. The process that you recommend your coaching dudes to go through, slow down, calm down, right? Pause with a specific yep. time limit. Uh, two, listen and hear. So what I hear is this. What I'm hearing is this. Three, identify the underlying situation, like what is really going on here, and then uh, take responsibility for what's going on. And then four is determine if a response is necessary. Did I get that? Yeah, okay? can, I, can I finish that? Yeah, can I finish that point? Yeah. So determining a response is that, is that sometimes a woman can be saying things, and this is especially through text, right, is that they can be saying things like, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. I will ignore the heck out of my ex wife on many occasions and not to just piss her off, but to go, you know what? She's venting right there. This really doesn't warrant a response. This, this was a manipulative statement. I'm not going to respond to it. And I'll ignore, like, like for example, she'll use things for our marriage or, or whatever, because we're co-parenting now and, and she'll say these things or whatever. And, and it can be very mean, like just, just accusatory things. And I'll just literally ignore it. I won't say anything. And then later on, I might text her something about a kid or something that's happening and there'll be no response to the other thing, and then she'll have let it go. And that is because not all communication is worthy of my response. Like if I hold myself in high standard and high regard as a man, as a man of character, as a man of honor and integrity, I don't always need to respond to accusatory statements, especially ones that are meant to bait me into an argument. 
and and you can say in some of those moments again we're you know i deal with uh someone who has borderline personality disorder uh and bipolar and so that person uh you know has has a lot of um you know issues and and uh and they don't they're very triggered and they don't know how to manage their emotions it was uh 17 years of walking on eggshells and um dealing with a lot of those things and so so sometimes my response is very upfront saying what i hear you doing right or what i hear you saying right now is this and it and it sounds very manipulative to me so therefore i am choosing not to respond to that or i'll say something like what you said right there in my opinion was out of line and i don't think it's appropriate i feel like that is the kind of statement we should keep out of our life and i'd ask you not to do that so that's putting boundaries boundaries a whole other training that I doing that. The final thing is decide on the response. And that's kind of what, what this is, right? It's just deciding on what you're going to actually say. So when you finally slow down, you hear what they're saying and you listen, you can just pause. Like, like I, some of the best conversationalists, you know, somebody will be really animated and they'll be like, you know this, you know that, you do this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they'll finally stop. And they're waiting for you to respond with that thing and just, hmm. yeah. I hear what you're saying. And that, and, that, and that just disarms them because they're like, they're waiting for the fire. They're waiting for the ammunition to get back to them. Um, I, and I learned this from sales actually, when I'm talking to a potential client and they're, they're going off on all the things they're struggling with and, and then they'll, they'll, they'll stop and they're waiting for me to like reply with some big thing and I'll just pause. And it makes people feel uncomfortable because we're so used to, we're not used to silence especially in conflict resolution. And, and so I'm deciding in response. My, I just practiced this earlier with my son. He asked me for his computer back. I have taken his computer for the last couple of weeks because he was doing some things on there that was not appropriate. And he basically needed to lose it for a while. He was going to his mom and he wasn't going to have it. And he said, can I have my computer? And I just paused. And I didn't answer him. And he's like, dad. And I looked at him and I said, I'm thinking. And I didn't respond again for a little while. And then, I, and then I came up with my boundaries because I wanted to process what I was feeling and go, okay, does this value line up with my value? With what he's asking, is this fair? And then I wanna process and know, okay, do I feel okay about this? Am I okay with this situation? Because a lot of times kids or wives or whatever will ask you something and you'll immediately respond, yes, no, whatever. And you're not thinking about the actual response. You're not thinking through it. Um, and that's for guys like me who are, I'm an ENFP, so I'm very uh, feeler, perceiver type personality. I'm not a thinker. So I, you know, like for me to think through something, I have to slow down and think through it. If everybody remembers uh, uh, King of Queens, Doug Heffernan, slow it down, Carrie. Uh, <laughs> he always would talk slow. And that's a great show to watch on, on emotional abuse in a marriage and physical abuse in marriage. If you ever want to know what not to do, don't respond like Doug Heffernan. And, and if you're married to a woman like Carrie, get the fuck out. I'm just saying that woman is batshit crazy. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating to watch and go, man, I feel like I've lived these scenes before. <laughs> Making fun of his way, you know, like all these things it's crazy. So that's really the five steps. Um, you know, the final thing is deciding in response and going from there. This whole thing, the, the, the training, like there's so much to this. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of time. You don't just master this overnight, but hopefully this is encouraging to some of you guys and you'll learn some things from it. Cool. So, hey, fellas out there, if you feel like you're in a toxic relationship or you want to improve the relationship you're in and, and learn how to not have toxic talking, right? Um, Mark, what's a good way for people to connect with you so, to kind of learn more about your, your, your one-on-one coaching for, for dudes or your coaching program for dudes? Sure. sure. So I'm going to create a page at empoweredman.co. So empoweredman.co is our main website. I'm going to create one that's uh, flash Josh. So empoweredman.co slash Josh. Uh, you can look me up also on Facebook um, as well, Mark Santiago. Um, I've got kind of a sideways photo where I'm like looking at the camera like, hey, babe. Um, or you can find our group. We've got the Empowered Man group. Uh, it's free to join. Um, we're doing lives in there, uh, just communicating a lot of these things. Like my whole goal is really to help guys get to a place where they're even, you know, most guys I talk to are not ready to actually work with me. So it's, it's, it's not about pitching you on something, it's about getting you to the place where you can decide if you're ready to work with me. Um, so it really doesn't matter to me if you come to my group and you just take all the free information and utilize it, go do it, do it, please. 
if I've done nothing but move men closer to having a better relationship with themselves and their wives and their kids, I have won the day. doesn't matter how many guys I have in my coaching program at the end of the day. What matters is moving men forward in that process. Uh, and that's, that's what's exciting to me is being able to put this information out there and help guys out. Cool. And what we'll do, Mark, is um, you just send me that specific link and I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. So if you're listening to this driving around, you're like, oh man, I, I couldn't take those notes. Just click on the show notes, click on the link and it'll go directly to Mark's page. And then you guys kick off the conversation and you all take it from here. But hey, Mark, thanks for coming on the show. Dudes, thanks for listening in on this podcast. If you're interested in coming on the show, sharing your advice to other dudes, or if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, or uh, maybe you want my recommendation on, on a good coach to connect with, man, I've been meeting with a lot of coaches. I could point you in the right direction. Just, just reach out to me. Uh, you can find all our information on the website. Uh, until then, man, Mark, thanks for chatting. I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen, I got to break that habit. You know, break that habit. This is all about dudes. <laughs> dudes out there, thanks for listening in. Mark, we'll see you, bud. Later. All right, man. See you.